map introduction. Um, uh, but I'm sure we'll we'll get that. Uh, <laughs> we'll <Okay>. get that. <laughs> yeah. So PVT on on Aquilon Wastes. Uh, we're looking. Uh, you're looking at that beautiful map introduction that we've got set up right now. We'll get into that in just a second. First, I'm gonna throw it to a real quick introduction of these two players here in the bottom right playing as purple one of my favorite colors to play as in starcraft 2 it is team macrona supremacy's ike and in the top left spawn position we've got a protoss player that you should all be familiar with he's from korea but not currently in korea he's playing from germany so he's got a zero lag zero latency and he can perform the best that he ever will it is the red protoss player it is the boss dolls it is sk gaming's mc i'm looking forward to this uh, this is going to be this is going to be wonderful it's going to be a difficult match for ike though he's going to probably play against the best opponent he's ever had yeah, uh, talk about uh, an opponent, you know, one of the uh, highest earning StarCraft II players ever. Uh, mm -hmm. MC, GSL, uh, top level competitor, champion. He, this is, this is going to be a very, very uh, difficult uphill battle for Ike. But, you know, that's, that's the beauty of these qualifiers. We get players that come out here not known as much. And maybe Ike has some, some special abilities have prepared for Protoss just for this qualifier. Maybe he's going to wow and dazzle us all. That is the beauty of WCS. That is the beauty of these qualifiers. But we are going to have uh, pretty standard openers so far from these players. No crazy fast gas from Ike. Um, I tried to, I guess, as a... I was trying to ask you a bit earlier, uh, Lyrian, any, mm -hmm. any particular thoughts as a Protoss player on this map, uh, specifically versus Terran? Well, on, on this map, I'd always go for uh, one gate expand, but that's really what you do <laughs> on any map versus uh, versus Terran in the in the current meta game. So that's not, not really that particular. Uh, taking a third base, relatively easy versus Terran on this map. When you get Blink, it's easy to defend um, a fourth base, relatively easy too. I don't think this is a very bad map to try and play a macro game on as a Protoss player versus a Terran. And that's one of the reasons why I think that this map was left in the map pool. How are you feeling uh, on this map as a Terran player? Well, uh, first I just want to agree with you. Yeah, it's it's such a it's such a good map for macroing, especially with how easy it is to secure bases later the game mm -hmm. it goes. But uh, from a Terran perspective, at least looking at the opener that we have out of Ike, he's kind of going for not the fastest gas possible. It's one of, a little bit more of a conservative build. Um, he will be able to go for a fast factory if he wants to so with this depot finishing up. But uh, in terms of overall strategy, uh, there's a lot of airspace outside of the main, the top areas of the map. Um, there's good cliff usage that you can kind of abuse with the medevacs, especially with that speed boost, but um, like you said, we do have MC. He's actually playing off of one gas. This does look like it's going to be a fast expand from our uh, SK Protoss. He's able to actually prevent the SCV from doing anything like throwing down an engineering bay to block mm -hmm. the expansion. But, well, there's the reactor now for uh, Ike, and he's going to get his command center. So a pretty macro-based uh, opener, but with that gas, he can get a fast factory, go for something like a fast widow mine follow-up. Um, we've seen players such as Thorzane uh, in the European metagame going for a fast Hellbat drop follow-ups, and we actually have a pretty quick second gas here for Ike. So we could see a bit more of a tech-based build than the standard uh, mine, medevac, marine timing, but... MC going to press forward with a Zealot and a Stalker. There's only a handful of Marines out right now. Two more about to come out for Ike. Um, MC just going to do a little bit of a poke here. Yeah, MC just wants to delay the command center from floating down to the low ground as much as possible. Wants to get an idea of what's happening. Oh, he's taking a bit of a shield. Uh, a lot of damage on this Zealot, actually. Wow, he goes ahead. What's happening? Why is that Zealot still alive? Oh, okay. I think he misclicked. It looked like, I think he uh, clicked his own depot there, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. It's actually burning down. He's going to need to bring an SCV to repair that. His factory is done, though. We do have a Widow Mine on the way. He's got a bit of gas. So we could see him throw down an army or a starport very quickly. Another Stalker coming up for MC. Going to blow away these Marines. That supply depot getting dangerously low as well. Ike is going to need to uh, do his best to keep these guys off of him. He doesn't want to get uh, lose that supply depot this early in the game. He's going to need to get an SCV over there. In the meantime, MC is throwing down this Nexus. He has his second gas and Warp Gate's about to finish and MC's going to add on two more gateways. Uh, looks like he's going to retreat for now, but with that probe there, he could get a little bit aggressive uh, later on. What do you think, uh, Larian? I think that MC is in a fantastic position right now. He he did everything that he hoped to do with that little poke. Killed a few units. He got a supply depot that I could have repaired. 
he's having a good idea of when his opponent is expanding, he knows what tech he has, he knows there's a reactor on that barracks, he knows the starport is probably not on the way yet because he's done some damage and uh, delayed things quite a bit. So MC is going to be feeling really happy about himself and he's not taking any risk whatsoever. No Stargate opener by him because he took his uh, second guess really late, so that was really indicative of a Robo and two additional gateways coming down out of MC. He's got the units in his main base, ready to defend against any kind of drop that I could throw at him. Ike does have his starport on the way, so he is gonna be uh, he's gonna be uh, going into some drop play. What is he gonna be dropping though? Is it gonna be those Hellbats that he's producing out of the factory now? It certainly looks so. Two Hellbats are on the way, but uh, MMC kind of covering all of his bases, opening up, chrono boosting out those observers. He has the Mothership Core banking energy now, and he's gonna be able to defend against any really fast mine play. He knows that since there is a reactor, that there was a gas opening, he doesn't need to get the probe inside the main uh, to tell that, but he's actually building some tech labs with his barracks, so he's possibly getting ready for a follow-up, maybe moving into tanks, or just getting his stim pack upgrade. Um, and he is going to throw a scan down in the main, seize the Robo in the three gateways, so he knows, okay, I don't have to worry about anything like a very super fast DT play, definitely not going to be Stargate. And, well, with the first medevac about to come onto the field, Ike is looking to go for uh, a pretty quick Hellbat drop, but what do you think about this Twilight Council we have coming down here for MC, Illyrian? Oh, that's pretty interesting. He doesn't even have a forge yet, so this is definitely not for upgrades. He's going to go straight into a high Templar play, uh, most likely. Um, not even going to try to go for a single Colossi and fake his opponent out. He is going to catch this drop though, Nathanius. That's really important. Oh. He sees the medevac boost out there with his observer, so MC knows exactly what's on the way. His second observer might be... No, the second observer is not going to catch the medevac again, but I'm sure MC saw what happened there, and his observer is seeing everything. His hallucinated Phoenix has been able to see everything that his observer hasn't, so MC should be in position to defend this, and he is. He's got an observer there, he's got five stalkers, and he should be absolutely fine here. Yeah, especially with that blink that he's getting, Lyran. He, he, the stalker should be able to shut this down as long as it doesn't take too much. I think what's a little bit more uh, interesting, but we'll get into that just in a second. This drop is moving in. More stalkers being warped in. He's going to drop into that main mineral line the Hellbat's going to take out. Actually doesn't manage to get any probes. He grazes a couple of them, bringing down to that uh, that orange health, but the photon overcharge is activated at the natural. He's going to try to snipe off this, uh, this medevac. The Hellbat's not really being able to do any damage, and he actually he doesn't get any probe kills there. But uh, I, what I wanted to just quickly gesture at, look at the main base for Ike. We have a double factory play now. He's pumping out a Raven and Siege Tanks and more Hellbats. So it does <laughs> look like Ike's going to go mech versus MC. Yeah, a bit of a weird mech composition, uh, I'd say, too. I mean, that Raven in there, that's that's pretty cool to see. Um, the Raven is going to be useful to drop, like, the point defense drone that's going to soak up a lot of the Stalker shots. And Stalkers, there's going to be a lot of them on the field. I mean, MC is on how many gateways is he? Is he still on only three gates? Wow, he's going to take a pretty big risk here and expand to a third base already off of only three gateways, but there are additional gateways coming down. Another three are on the way. His Stalkers are aggressively poking in here. Ike does have a Siege Tank set up defensively, but it's only one Siege Tank, and Stalkers can easily blink on top of a single one and take it out. Yeah, especially important to mention the, the mobility of the Stalkers over the Siege Tanks, actually. I recall in uh, another WCS uh, qualifier match for North America, we had a between, mm -hmm. it was, it was a, between uh, Noni and Mario. Uh, we saw a lot of good Blink Stalker usage to catch tanks out of position, pick them off one by one, and then get away before the Hellbats can do damage. That could be what MC is planning to do with this large Stalker count, but he's already getting a Fleet Beacon and adding on gateways, so he looks like he wants to uh, tech up super fast here. and. Well, it looks like Ike does want to take this pocket third base. The command center is about to finish. He's busted down that rock tower, and MC's taking his third base. It's about to complete. Where do you think he's going to go from here? Is he going to stick to these stalkers or make a quick switch with his second Stargate he's adding on? <laughs> I have no idea what MC's doing. I don't think this is uh, the most legit opener I've ever seen him do, going into blink stalkers on two base, grabbing a third, and then going into uh, a double Stargate play with, with a fleet beacon. Um, it's definitely interesting to see how it's going to be working out. He takes out the rocks, does lose uh, does lose a stalker there in the process to that siege tank, but that's alright. He's uh, in quite the alright position. And there it is, where you see Tempest, ridiculously early Tempest, 12 minutes in this game, coming up out of MC. And that is going to that's gonna put a little bit of a damper on Ike's plans if he gets caught off guard by these. He is actually producing Vikings, he does have yep. a reactor on that starport, but... I mean, if you can get up a good number of them with the with the Raven, actually, the point defense drone works quite well versus the Tempest, but uh, with that third base now just starting to kick in for Ike, he needs to get some SCVs over there. It's 
I mean, it, it, the, the mech push is all about making one push that works. So if he gets the right composition to be able to deal with this, mm -hmm. the Stalkers, though, are going to blink over and, oh, that Raven is going to get picked off. Such an important, expensive unit. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, it's all about having the perfect composition for a final push or, uh, or really just drawing the game out to the late game scenario. But that's where MC is going to shine with these super long range units. And we have the first couple of Tempest coming out onto the field. He has the third one about to finish. And yep. um, he's getting his plus one air upgrades. Yeah, these Tempest, MC is preparing for the late game already at, at 12 to 13 minutes into this game. So he's going to have a fantastic composition to deal with Ike when he's maxed out. And like you said, it's going to be about one big engagement. Ike is going to move out with everything he has when he's maxed out. And he's going to try to kill MC and hope he wasn't ready for that just yet. As he's trying to drop again, has MC caught any wind of this drop? I don't think he has, but this observer is in a pretty good position. So he will get a bit of an early notification that another um, medevac is going to be boosting in here. Oh, he's actually getting uh, very... <laughs> he's very easily seeing this, so there should be units uh, getting in position to defend against this, but there's not actually... MC might be losing a few of his probes here, but the Tempest shooting from very far away, they're dealing with that drop relatively well. Yeah, and, and you know, more importantly, though, the Hellbats didn't really kill too much there. He has another drop uh, with Hellbats going on the left side of the map, but mm -hmm. a Warp Prism now getting into the main base of Ike. He's going to warp in five of these Zealots, a sixth one as well. So Ike's going to have a lot of trouble, and this mech army is so slow, it's going to hard, be hard to deal with that. The Photon Cannon's going to uh, basically shut Ooh. this drop down. He will not be able to get in there, and the Armory being targeted down, he's not going to be able to produce any more Hellbats or tanks. His second Armory might also be delayed, and at the same time, the Stalkers are going to try to abuse this and run in, but the tanks are in position. The Observer does see the mine, um, MC is actually going to lose a lot of stalkers here, but now blinking in onto that third base wall, the Zealots um, are finally been cleaned up. Viking will be able to take out that warp prism, but the third base for Ike is going to have to be lifted, and this is definitely not a good position to be in. No, it's not. He's going to lose a lot of mining time there, where while MC has already got his fourth base finished up, and he's continuing to produce those tempers. These stalkers are pretty expendable right now. He is, of course, going to try to blink out of there, and he does so successfully. He loses only one stalker in the retreat. That was a, that was good positioning there by MC, managing to get as many units out there as possible. And his tempest count is out of control. Already eight of them on the field. He also has 17 zealots out on the field who are going to be buffering the damage on the ground, making sure that the Marines and Marauders cannot just run up to those Tempests and kill them off. Yeah, you know, a lot of the supply is in the Hellbats, which will be good versus the Zealots, but I gotta say, with this many Tempests on the field, those Stalkers, before they left, they did a, they did a damn good job of focusing down those Vikings, and, mm -hmm. well, I mean, if you look at the unit counting station, like you said, there's so many Tempests, ten of them, and only eight Vikings, no Raven for point defense round, and now he's gonna go in and try to engage this force, but is there even enough anti-air? The Vikings are coming forward. They do do that uh, extra damage versus the armored Tempest, but with so many of them on the field, I'm so worried the Thors are set into that high impact payload mode. They are going to try to take these down, but is Ike going to have enough? I'm just not sure. Templar Archives coming behind this and consistent uh, Tempest production. All of the Vikings are going to get shut down here for Ike. Yeah, and those Thors are the only anti-air left remaining and a few Marines are in there, but they are not going to be enough. Here comes the rest of the army of MC. He's actually buying more time. Ike knows that he has no anti-air left and he's going to be forced to GG out of this first map here on Ike.